Hello, and welcome to Horror Rewind. This is Kelly Florence. And I'm Meg Hofdahl. And this week we're talking about Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds. Meg has a fear of birds. Yeah, and a lot of people have asked me when they find out that I don't like birds. They've asked me if this was the movie that did it. And I, I think maybe, you know, it sort of didn't help, but I've always just not liked birds. In fact, the other day, um, so we have turkeys on our property, and um, my seven-year-old brought in tur- big, huge turkey feathers, and I thought I was okay with it, but then he came over and he put them directly onto my face and, like, tickled my face with them and my entire body just like I just became a roly-poly like I screamed I just I don't I don't like anything about birds okay except I do sort of like their aesthetic like put a bird on it Portlandia style like on clothes and stuff like that and I have a raven (laughs) tattoo on my chest well I was gonna say it's ironic because you've decorated your house with a lot of birds now and I've always thought like oh like you're just embracing your fear because I remember seeing, did you did you ever watch that show? It was on um, A and E, and it was about people's extreme fears, and they would do like, what does they call it? Conversion, conversion therapy? No, not conversion therapy. It's like where you like, what is the word? I, 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 not emulsion. Like I am brain dead. Well, anyway, you expose yourself exposure therapy expose yourself to the thing and I was like oh that's why she's doing it but but you know the raven and a ground pow and this raven reading the book I think it's perfect I like the sort of look of of a bird in like an artistic sense and yeah the raven I, I like um sort of what it evokes and I think I do decorate with birds because I am scared of them which I mean I think makes sense if you know me right um, and why I watch movies that scare me. So, um, but yeah, when it actually comes to an actual real bird, though, like, fuck no. Immersion therapy. Immersion therapy? Yeah, like, immer- okay. Immerse yourself. Okay, we got it now, guys. I was like, what is the word? Anyway, um, we are recording live once again from the Vampire Diaries convention. And Meg, you have a convention coming up at the end of May. I do. Um, it is uh, Memorial Day weekend. I'm going to be at Comic Palooza at Houston, in Houston, and I'll be at the Inklings publishing table and possibly the Spider Road Press publishing table. And also Sunday, and the date has flown out of my head, but Sunday of Memorial Day weekend, I will be on a panel about women in horror at Comic Palooza um, at noon. So if you are in town and you're at Comic Palooza, which is a huge convention, and they have great guests this year, they have um, Andrew Holland, isn't that? his name Spider-Man? Tom Holland Tom Holland who the hell is Andrew Holland and oh <laughs> oopsie <laughs> Freudian slip I guess he's my real Spider-Man just kidding um Tom Holland and they have a bunch of other cool actors um so anyway if you'll be there um come visit me at the women in horror panel I'd love to see you great and you know where I'll be that weekend at home with my feet up <laughs> rub it in (laughs) I know sorry but you know we're like in the thick of it right now uh we are on day three of a convention and we love them but this sounds really really whiny but it gets tiring to sit for this many days in a row and I know that sounds whiny but you know so Meg tell us about first of all your experience seeing the birds for the first time and then some history about it okay um my personal history, I watched it when I was very young. Um, I basically wanted to watch it because it was about birds, and I think it's been a big influence on my life. And actually now watching it uh, so recently, I can see other ways it influenced, not just actual birds, um, but, but other things that we can talk about. But history-wise, um, it came out in 1963, which... Let's sort of put that in perspective. 1960 is when Psycho came out. Um, And so this was three years later. It's Alfred Hitchcock directed, of course. Um, And it's loosely based on a short story, a 1952 short story by Daphne du Maurier, who, if you guys ever listen to this podcast, know is one of my favorite authors. So actually, I decided I was going to read the short story, and I didn't have it. So I uh, checked out thrift books, which I keep hearing is a great way to buy books, which by the way it is. 
And I bought the short story collection and got it in the mail. And I was like, yay, I'm going to be so prepared for this podcast. And it was the wrong short story collection. It was uh, her, but it was the wrong story. So I would like to get around to reading it. Um, the screenplay was written by Evan Hunter. And it's starring Rod Taylor, Tippi Hedren, um, who, of course, is our typical sort of Hitchcock blonde in this movie. I thought it was interesting that her name was Melanie because she's known, of course, uh, to be the mother of Melanie Griffith. And I saw, I looked at that, and Melanie Griffith was already born. So it's just like, yeah, it was totally ironic. Yeah, I actually, I did check that because I was like, did she name her daughter after her, like, most iconic character? But no, I guess it was a coincidence. Um, it basically was a popular film. Oh, let's talk about how Veronica Cartwright's in this movie. It's so fascinating because, of course, um, she's in that great scene in um, Witches of Eastwick that we love. And she's in several good scenes in that. But, of course, the cherry throwing up scene. And she's in Alien and um, X-Files. So she's a great sort of iconic horror maven herself. And it was weird to see her as a kid. I know. When I saw the name, I was like, wait, what? And, yes, the, she was a child actor then, and she's the little sister. Yeah, so I found that fascinating. Um, apparently, what sort of spurred on uh, Hitchcock was an actual real event that happened in 1961 um, about a bunch of birds who, they basically fell out of the sky. Uh, they weren't attacking people, but they fell out of the sky dead. Um, and it happened uh, on the coast of California. So he used that as research and sort of gave that to the screenwriter to use. So, tell me kind of about your experience with the birds. So, my history, my dad, I remember, rented this. It was one of those movies from the library, again, which the library was a 30-minute drive away and a 30-minute drive home. So, it wasn't like I could just pop over, like, my local video store, which was just in a gas station three miles away. I could ride my bike there. Uh, so, this is one of the movies I, I probably only saw once. But I was young, and my dad specifically rented it because he knew I would love it, and I did. And I haven't rewatched it probably since then. And I watched it with my kids, and they loved it. And we all loved it. And the next day, like, we saw a crow, like, on the road, and we're, like, we were talking to it, and, like, don't kill us, crow, <laughs> because it felt so, like, this movie, spoiler alert, I freaking love it. I love it. I think it's one of the most perfect movies ever made. And so now I get to how do we reconcile Alfred Hitchcock and how he treated Tippi Hedren on this film and other actresses. How do we reconcile his treatment of women and his, but his brilliance of filmmaking? Yeah, I think that's something that um, not just us, but like literally everyone on earth has to sort of come to terms with. Um, with any sort of art you love, because at the end of the day, there's always going to be an asshole. And, and Hitchcock was definitely one of those. Um, what I can say about this movie, though, is I was blown away with how many complicated female characters there are in this movie. So behind the scenes, I know that there's a lot of problematic shit going on. But the film itself, I can see how it influenced the sort of characters that I like to write about. Um, Melanie in this movie, she has a past. She's not perfect. Um, and that is the sort of heroine that I'm always searching for. So um, I think I think she's really, her DNA is in a lot of what I do. Um, not to mention his mother, played by um, Jessica Tandy. She is known to be a, a complicated woman to deal with. Um, the I I can't think of her name. Suzanne Plachette, um, the school teacher. She is not just your average everyday school teacher. Every woman in this movie really had a role to sink their teeth into, and that was probably my favorite thing. I was so surprised. I couldn't believe it, and I went in guarded because I knew. That that movie came out. I can't remember who played Tippi Hedren in that movie. Who just came out about Alfred Hitchcock behind the scenes. Well, I knew that that came out and was saying, you know, basically how he treated his actresses. But it kept surprising me. So first of all, 
um, we the, at the beginning of this movie, Hitchcock comes out of the store with his typical cameo, walking his dogs, and I freaking love that. Um, can you imagine working in a store with that many birds chirping? It would drive me nuts. Literally, as we're talking about the movie, I have this physical... So my whole upper back is just, like, tingling, and I'm like, I feel like I have to pull my shoulders up to my ears, and we're just talking about it. Um, I've never... I don't have that reaction with any other horror movie. Um, it is only birds that give me that physical reaction. I wrote a short story about birds, and literally the whole time I wrote it, I had this. So working in that store, I would rather work in the sewer with Pennywise. Yeah. Well, and, and I know you say it's the swooping, and obviously it's the swooping in this movie, too. Oh, and it's all of it. Okay. Well, it's the swooping, it's the beaks, it's the claws, it's the feathers, it's the noises they make. Just fuck them all. Wow. Okay. Meg, I, we're, we're definitely triggering Meg here. I The first thing I wrote about uh, this M- Melanie character, she is strong. She's not serious she's tenacious like she goes through so much just to pull this practical joke on this guy because he dared you know confront her and make fun of her and she's gonna put him in her his place i love that she like freaking drives up like spends her entire day she's like oh and the one guy's like do you know how to deal with a boat she's like uh yeah and she just gets rents the boat jumps in in her heels she looks fucking splendid the whole time like she looks amazing and she just jumps in the boat goes across goes into the house because nobody locks their door and it was great it's hilarious some little funny moments she's driving really fast around all these curves and the birds are like swaying in the car because she's going so fast around the curves that was hilarious um something i wanted to mention have you seen the movie i tanya yet no i haven't um alice and janney is that her name she plays Tanya Harding's mother, and her scenes are all... She's wearing this fur coat that's over the top, and she has a bird on her shoulder that's constantly pecking her face. And it reminded me... Watching this movie reminded me of I, Tanya, and it's hilarious. I mean, it's dark. It, it's dark hilarious in that movie and disturbing uh, in I, Tanya. And then at the end of the movie, they show the actual footage, and that was actually happening like during her whole interview and it's so weird so like the actual character she's playing tanya harding's mother she's actually having a bird like peck on her face oh my god and 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 it's like this she keeps going like she looks at it and she's like stop it and as soon as she turns her face back it pecks some more it's so funny there's a story that my husband always we always it's like an in joke where he was at a pet store once and this guy like had a bird on his shoulder and the bird was doing something and the guy took the bird down and he put him in his hand and he put his finger up to the bird's beak and he said you stop it you and, <laughs> and looks like it was the most surreal thing that this guy was like talking to his bird like that so we'll say that to each other all the time like you stop it you <laughs> so cute oh that also reminds me of a scene in Stephen King's Shawshank Redemption when Brooks like he grabs a worm or a maggot out of um Tim Robbins food and you're like oh god what does he have in his pocket but it's just a little baby bird that is sweet so okay everybody dresses so fancy like they're wearing suits and dresses and I freaking love it like give me some of this classic Hollywood well-dressed costuming because I live for it and like you were saying Jessica Tandy she's being weird and strange and protective of her son and she's being strange about meeting this woman um and oh my god, Tippy Hedren, she's so quick witted. She doesn't let anyone walk all over her. And then there's this great girl talk scene where she's with the the teacher and and there's this sister and this mother. Like there's so many great scenes with women. The girl talk scene is great because they're just being like frank with each other and they're just being like they're just being real about like they're warning each other or well, the teacher's sort of warning her about this guy. And it's not, they're not, like, sizing each other up, like, competition or anything like that. And it's, it's like, wow, this is 1963. And, yeah, Melanie's character, she's, she's known to have been, like, running around naked in a fountain in Italy. And she's like, yeah, that's me, you know? And she's just sort of unapologetic about who she is. And, um, I, I don't know, I feel like, I don't know what it was like to live in 1963. I, like, I think about my, my mother 
that decade literally got fired for wearing pants to work and like that was the reality of life and it must have been kind of interesting to see a character like this you know like who's tough but tough in a still real way where she's complicated and authentic uh, yeah they they're having girl talk they're smoking they make it look so elegant and then the phone rings and the school teacher answers and but it's the guy calling for Melanie and then the dynamic after the phone call is great because we knew that it would be awkward and their conversation is about a man and his mother but it's not about competition like you said it's just warning and honest and so real yeah kind of like okay honey I've like been down that road and it's tough stuff you know and it's like not about like oh my god but he's mine and like pulling each other's hair or something exactly uh let's get down to the real issue did you find the lead man handsome he's all right you know I'm not I it kind of goes into that whole thing of what I find attractive but like I don't really like playboy like guys who know they're good looking yeah I didn't find him attractive this, did you know, and I, th- I guess you know because I've told you, but listeners, did you know that The Birds is a stage-adapted play? They did put this on in Duluth last year. I didn't get a chance to see it. Uh, but the whole thing of The Birds was done just with sounds and noises, not any visual birds. And I don't know, like I don't know because I didn't see it. I don't know if that works as well in my mind as like these, this visual of The Birds. Now, for 1963, I feel like the visual is done really well, but I would love to see a remake of this movie. I know, you know, and when I say remake, I don't mean a shot for shot, like pointless remake, like for Psycho. Um, But I would love to see another director sort of take a stab at this with the updated CGI and everything. That would, that could be really cool. Um, But, you know, you mentioned sound and I feel like this movie, if I were a film teacher and I wanted to teach my students about how to use sound in a film I think this would be the one absolutely the sound is so effective and it and I shouldn't say it relies on visuals because it absolutely doesn't but I wonder if without the visuals on stage if you can still get that creepy feeling so I don't know the swarm from the fireplace can you imagine I'm speechless right now because we watch so many scary movies, but it, first of all, it's real. Like, I don't believe in, in like, you know, Samara from the ring is not going to come through the TV, but like birds could come through your fireplace and, um, I would probably just die from just, from just having that happen. I don't think they'd even have to touch me. So my parents, where I grew up, we lived in the country and there were always uh, wild partridge on their property. And they are known for being dumb and flying into windows. Many windows, like tens of windows, were broken in their house because partridge would fly into them. And they flew so fast and hard and strong into them that they broke through. And, like, a bloody dead partridge would be laying on, like, their bathroom floor. Oh, I don't like that it got into the house. It's like in the scene in the movie where she, oh, and okay. So she walks in, everything's quiet. She walks in, she sees the broken window and the, like the dead bird on the shards of glass. And then she looks down and sees the dead body. That is a great use of sound, by the way, because she doesn't scream. She just, she is so scared. She can't even scream. And she's like kind of gurgling. And that was a great use of sound. But that would be me if um, that happened. I, yeah, I couldn't even. If I, okay, so I'm not gonna, I don't mean to scare you, but I'm going to. But imagine if you were like in the bathroom at my parents' house and the, and a bird broke the window above your head because that's where the toilet was and was like flapping dying at your feet I would hope that I was on the toilet because I'd be pooping my pants <laughs> <laughs> okay yes as you mentioned when she sees the body it's like the pecked out eyes I think this is the the time um, Campbell said immediately he's like everybody needs to get some goggles on and like get the heck out he's very practical I like that in him <laughs> um, 
wh- did could Vienna handle the the pace of this movie? I feel like it had to be slow for a four year old. She admittedly she was doing some other things while we were watching it, but she was every time there was bird action, she was there. Well, I'm not surprised about her. I I would be interested to see how my kids would do. I don't know. I think they might find it interesting, but I feel like the Hitchcock pace could maybe throw them off. But, you know, maybe maybe I'm underestimating them. One of the greatest scenes in cinematic history for me has to be she's waiting for her friend, the teacher, to be done with class. Or she's going to pick up his daughter, her new bull's daughter, from school. She sits on the playground. They show behind her, like, there's one or two birds or something. And then they keep showing close-ups her, of her and everything else. And then by the time we see her again, Meg is freaking out. And they show the shot, and she realizes there's hundreds of birds just sitting behind her. It's brilliant. I have chills, and my neck is just, like, contracting, like, the muscles in my neck. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, I... I wrote a short story called There's Something About Birds because there's just something about them the way that... And here's the thing. Here's what's scary about them. And and that scene perfectly shows it. They're always around. They're, when you walk outside the door, there's always a bird somewhere. Whether you're hearing it or seeing it, there's always one. And you we wouldn't even notice. You know, if there's five, you wouldn't notice. If there's ten, you wouldn't notice. But pretty soon, if there's a hundred birds... They would they would sneak in on you and you wouldn't even know because we're used to seeing them. I love that. Okay, there's they're in this diner now, and people are, they're starting to freak out. People aren't believing them. The, a woman again, a great character, ornithologist. She's the bird expert. A woman, which is amazing. People aren't believing that it's real. And I'm freaking secretly glad that the birds attacked people right after everyone doubted her because, like, okay, a few guys then. Um, it was brilliant. And then, like, all this stuff is happening because of the bird attack, like the, the fire and the gas explosion. And it's so good. That was another great use of sound because there was all this explosion and craziness. And then um, the two main characters... Um, go back into the diner and it's quiet and they walk over and there's a whole hallway full of people who are just silent with big eyes like oh my fucking god what's going on out there and it was just another great use of sound it's so true now something that they never explain and it's left open-ended and I kind of like that they never explain what's happening to the birds why it's happening what's going on they just drive and we don't know if it's everywhere i mean they're uh, yet if it's going to be everywhere or if it's just now so apparently there's they use some live birds some mechanical birds and some animation i thought it was seamless especially for the time oh yeah for the time and it, i mean i think it holds up um i think they did a great job i mean probably i'm guessing you know just like in any movie of that era i'm guessing there's probably some um issues that peta would have because they, you know, for using the real birds, I'm sure they pro- it probably wasn't ethical in a lot of ways. Um, but I think it's amazing and it holds up. You know, it's so funny. Like, we talk about a movie like Lost Boys, and I didn't love it, obviously, but I felt, I felt like Lost Boys is just so of its time that it doesn't really, it doesn't, it, for me, this is just my opinion, it didn't, it doesn't feel like it can transcend its time, but. I feel like a movie like The Birds, even though, yes, it's very 60s, I feel like it transcends it. I totally agree, and I feel like it's awesome. I just loved this movie. Is there anything else you want to say about The Birds? You know, I don't know. I, I want to say that, you know, it's so hard because, like, for instance, my mom um, loves Woody Allen movies, and... I, there are some Woody Allen movies that I absolutely love, like Midnight in Paris, and it's so hard because you don't know where that line is, and I know that Alfred Hitchcock was who he was, um, but I, I don't know, I don't know if it's right to compartmentalize those things, what I do know is that I loved watching this movie, and I think it's worth watching, and I think as a woman, I appreciated the characters in this story, and so I can't tell people where where they should lie on on that sort of thought but i love this movie 
something that I heard the other day on NPR. A woman wrote a book about this, actually, and I'll link it when we post this podcast episode. But uh, it, it's just all about this struggle of how do we deal with this and reconcile this. Well, here's my thought. I am never going to support another Woody Allen movie, and he shouldn't work again. Unless, you know, I don't know, he changes his ways and make amends or something. But I don't, that, that's not going to happen for him specifically. Um, Alfred Hitchcock, he's dead. We can't hold him accountable. But as long as we know and we go in with that footnote and that asterisk saying, okay, we have to be aware of this because it's important so it doesn't happen again. Uh, Bill Cosby, I will never watch the Cosby show again because he's still alive and I'm not going to give him that satisfaction of views. I don't know. Uh, he is being held accountable now. He should never work again. But at the same time, what this author was saying, she's like, yes, we can not consume this art, but people aren't just good or bad. Even bad people can make good art and good people can do bad things. And so as soon as we start lumping people into categories and labels, we're missing the nuance of everybody. Also, Alfred Hitchcock's not the only person who was involved with that movie. And if we were like, okay, burn all the Alfred Hitchcock movies, um, a lot of people put their heart and soul, including the actors and writers and all of those people, into it too. So I think that's something to take into account as well. So yeah, and I and I don't know if it make if this is right or a right or wrong way to look at it, but you know, since we he's not going to make more movies, and we're we're not going to hold him up in a pedestal anymore because people know how he treated his actresses I think it's okay to appreciate his art as long as we're not like excusing it we're like wincing our faces because we're like we think it's okay (laughs) I think it's like the reductus headline that says woman uh, puts away her feminism for the night to watch um, like say yes to the dress for three hours (laughs) yeah sometimes you know you just have to you just have to (laughs) it's okay Um, but in the end I love this movie and I'm ready to rate it are you ready to rate what's the scale I feel like it could be like pecked out eyeballs or lovebirds how about how about lovebirds that are vicious and attacking you not nice lovebirds okay so out of zero to ten lovebirds zero being you hated it ten being it's a perfect movie how many lovebirds do you give the birds ten i give it ten because despite all the problematic behind the scenes if you're just judging it as a film it's a ten i absolutely 100 percent give this movie a ten it has to be one of the best movies in existence. Do you think I'm being dramatic? I am. Because I freaking love this movie. It's so good. It's good on, on all the all the criteria. It, I And everything that we're looking for, for 1963, it surpassed my expectations. It blew me away. Yeah, agreed. I You never know, I mean, with this experiment of doing Horror Rewind. And I knew that I loved the movie when I was a kid. Um, but it scared me. It interested me. It was visually interesting. Um, the sound, the, there's just, there's so much. There's rich characters. Um, it's just such a, a masterpiece. Go watch The Birds if you haven't watched it in a long time. It is on Amazon Prime. No, it wasn't on Amazon Prime. I mean, it's there to buy. It was streaming on HBO or something. So check it out. Okay, we are going from one of the best movies I've ever seen in my life to one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my life. I'm actually going to talk about two movies because I couldn't even watch the first movie all the way through. I couldn't handle it. Are you ready, Meg? Yeah, this is exciting, actually. Sometimes, like, when I'm home and I'm correcting papers or I'm doing whatever around the house, I'll put on something that I don't have to invest my life in, but it'll be on in the background. Well, I'm like, oh, I never saw this horror movie. It came out recently. It's called The Bye Bye Man. Oh, okay. Yeah, I haven't watched it, but I've, a couple times I've like considered it. Like I've looked at it and been like, "Oh, maybe." I couldn't finish it because the the premise is and I'm definitely not giving anything away because there's nothing to give away. If you say or think the the name, the bye-bye man, which I just said, then he's going to come and kill you. So you either say or think it, which is like saying don't think of a pink elephant right now. Like, of course, you're going to think of it. So 
okay, that's a problem, and there's nothing you can do to get away from him then? Well, I mean, I could see how that could be a cool concept if done well. I mean, maybe if the execution was there? Because I, I could see how, like, you're, it's, it's kind of like Freddy Krueger, like, not falling asleep. As soon as, like, you know that you can't fall asleep, you're going to get tired. So it's, like, as soon as you think it. And it kind of, when you right when you said it, for some reason, it made me think of, like, Bloody Mary. Like, yeah, I, I was thinking of that or Candyman or something. But, but it's just, like, even thinking about it. So it, how can you not think about something? I don't know. It makes me think of that um, scene, and I want to do this movie, um, the remake of Village of the Damned, when Christopher Reeves has to um, picture a brick wall because the kids can read his mind, and he's just like, he just keeps trying to picture a brick wall, and they kind of like show it, how it's like breaking down. Um, so that, yeah, but apparently it was not done well in this movie. Well, and maybe it's done well, but I, it just didn't get me. And then... Um the thing, the way that the Bye Bye Man is like messing with this main guy is that he's making him believe that his girlfriend and his best friend are cheating with each other, like on him. And I don't know. I just felt like that, that seems like really trashy and beneath like a demon or whoever this is. Is he a demon or something? I don't know. I mean, so the visuals, you know, were kind of creepy. Admittedly, I was watching this in like the middle of the day, so maybe it was better. But I was like, you know, I'm not going to finish this. So then I put on, uh, that was on demand. Then I put on a, a second horror movie, which I did finish, and it was called Friend Request. And Friend Request was actually set up at the Women in Horror Film Festival. Oh, did you watch it? Yeah, and I'm like, why didn't I freaking do that for my freaking fast forward? Should I not talk about it and then you can talk about it? Okay, so Friend Request reminds me of, like, single white female except for this technology age. Yeah, um, it was, I was, I was interested in it, like, because we'd seen something about it at Women in Horror, so. So the, the thing that they had set up for this movie was, like, you looked into this, camera or something but then like it did a jump scare of like this girl's face because somehow if you like see your reflection it like it takes you there's like a whole legend that goes along with it and I mean I thought it was like a solid sort of know what you're getting into horror movie it didn't blow me away but you know it was solid yeah agreed it didn't blow me away but you know it had it had some good moments um I started to sort of like get a little bored by the end but overall I thought it was pretty decent yeah, I agree. So um, that's the, the two horror movies that I have watched recently. And make sure to tune in for new episodes throughout the summer. Also, um, don't bring me anything bird related. <laughs> this is like the worst case scenario. I tell everybody what my number one fear is. And I don't want feathers. I don't want anything feather related. I mean, yeah, don't be mean to Meg, guys. <laughs> but until next time, we'll see you in the horror section. Bye, everyone.